The Bitcoin Group, the American original. For over the last 10 seconds, the sharpest Satoshis, the best Bitcoins, the hardest cryptocurrency talk. We'd like to welcome our panelists, Josh Shigala from Voltoro. Hey, howdy ho, folks. Adam McBride from the Adam McBride Show. Uh, let's go, ETH is money. Dan Eve, the Crypto Raptor. Won't somebody please think of the Bitcoin? And I'm Thomas Hunt from the World Crypto Network. Moving on to issue one. Issue one. Crypto markets wipe out $150 billion of value within hours of China's latest Bitcoin ban. But first, let's book back at a history of the Bitcoin group and China Bitcoin bans brought to you by WorldCryptoNetwork.com, created by DJ Booth in Australia. Let's check it out. Remember, just a little while ago, on July 9th, 2021, Bitcoin group number 266, when China cracked down on crypto. Issue one, analysis, limited capacity, logistics to slow Chinese Bitcoin miners global shift. China is continuing to move Bitcoin miners out of China, but it's taking longer than you might think, unplugging all those computers and moving them somewhere else to plug them in. Also, China continues to crack down on Bitcoin, taking down a company that was suspected of providing software services for virtual currency transactions. For years, China has signaled that it wants to ban Bitcoin. They could be looking to stem capital outflows via stablecoins and cryptocurrencies next, or it could be all part of their 100th anniversary of the Chinese Communist Party. Be sure to give us a thumbs up down below if you're just starting to watch the show. Ben Ark. And who could forget, back on November 4th, 2016, Bitcoin group number 115, when China banned Bitcoin. Issue two. Issue two. Bitcoin tanks on report that China is considering a crackdown. The cryptocurrency Bitcoin hit a low of 787 after seeing the heights of 740 and 745. Just look at the price of Bitcoin in this chart from Bloomberg. It's been up and down fighting for the 700 barrier with a four month high of 743 on Thursday. There is worry that Chinese authorities think that investors are using Bitcoin to illegally move money out of the country. Gabriel Devine, I ask you. And of course, before that on the Bitcoin group number 30 live from May 16th, 2014. Opening this Sunday in Hong Kong, Bitcoin Museum, Meetup Place, and more. Make the Bitcoin robot dance at hkbitcoinatm.com. On a similar note, hundreds attend China's first Bitcoin summit, defying Beijing's warning. China, issue three, China Bitcoin boom. China is ignoring warnings or perhaps heeding them as good advice and getting into Bitcoin anyway. Hundreds attended the Bitcoin conference in China, and Bitcoin businesses are moving offshore to get away from influence and plan to continue operating. Is Bitcoin truly the cyberpunk international currency of the future now that it is both banned and actively in use worldwide? With and of course, back on the Bitcoin group number two from September 13th, 2021. I think Davi made a good point about the tulips, but it's not totally analogous with that because at the end of the day, the tulips were all valueless. Bitcoin is something that's very exciting and it makes sense that there'd be a mania around it. The question is how long will that mania last? And you know, we're still heading up eventually, I think. I think it lasts um, until it's a global currency because every time there's a fresh influx of Bitcoin users, those users are, are uh, they're newbies, they're virgins. And so they come in with a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of volatility. And so every time there's a new crop of people, they're going to panic more. They're going to buy and sell faster. And it's going to take them a couple of crashes and burns before they calm down like the rest of us. And so we're going to see that until it's everybody. Exit question. The value of Bitcoin will go up or down. Davi Barker. 
Uh, I I think it's going up. I don't think I don't Eric think it's going to I say it's going up in the short term and the long term. A- Andreas. Uh, it's going to bounce around chaotically um, in the short term, but in the long term, uh, Bitcoin can't do a gradual rise. It can only do explosive. In the long term, we're going to the moon. Issue two, Bitcoins in China. Popular Chinese exchange BTC China is operating without exchange fees during the Chinese holiday. The price of a Bitcoin in China is surging. The government is turning a blind eye. Is China the new engine of Bitcoin? In China we trust? I ask you, Davi Barker. Obviously, as you can tell, China and Bitcoin have been on this show again and again and again. And just recently this last year, China banned Bitcoin mining, knocking all of the machines out of their country. Josh Shigala, what do you think about the latest Chinese ban? Is this the end of it? Obviously, it's all over the mainstream media. It's the craziest thing. If you play the Bitcoin crypto drinking game with CNBC, you'd be dead right now. Every five (laughs) minutes, crypto, CNBC, Bitcoin, Ethereum, crypto, out of control. Josh, go ahead. Yeah. Hey, by the way, that last video with Andreas isn't 2021. I don't know why that says that on the video. Oh, yeah. That's the uh, re-upload from this year. It's probably 2014. Uh, yeah right right got you um well look (laughs) it's so funny isn't it actually what i what i find quite interesting is that the price has usually done very dramatic things in the early days so 2014 those when china banned bitcoin it would do a full-on dump like full-on diarrhea and uh and then the next one full on again a little bit less Next one, full on again, a little bit less. This one, I mean, I hardly even really know. Yeah, it went down from like 37, uh, what is it, 37 down to what, 35, something like that. Where are we? Um, I, it, just, it just wasn't really that, uh, that much of a, I didn't really notice it that much. All I noticed was the news in, in total chaos about it. Big. And, and th- that's the other interesting thing. I, I feel like all the new newbie news outlets are like obsessed with China bans Bitcoin when all of the old schoolers are like, ah, what again? You know, and there's this old saying that uh, that my Chinese friends say that is like the land is vast and the emperor is far away. And it comes, that's so true for a lot of the Chinese people. They just don't care. They'll move forward and they'll keep using uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, crypto. Actually, one thing that I find interesting with the China ban, and uh, this comes for other countries that ban it, um, what you're really banning here is the on and off ramps and the mining. And this is where I feel like proof of stake does have an advantage over proof of work because um, there was guarantee will be Chinese uh, proof of stake miners mining all over the place uh, because it's very hard to determine that's what they're doing uh, if you're encrypting properly. Um, so it, whereas proof of work really, you, you just can't get away from it. If it's truly hardcore illegal and you're going to prison, um, it's kind of hard to hide gigawatts of power uh, just getting drained from a city. Uh, without your, your your front door getting knocked down, so um, that that's the only thing about proof of work is it's kind of hard to hide when it gets to mass scale. Uh, although you know, saying that, it's kind of hard to find if you've just got a single miner running, and it could be that you just really love to have saunas every day. Uh, but um, yeah, let's see what happens. Um, the, the Chinese people are very, very clever. They get around stuff. They have for years. Uh, there's nothing really that stops them. Uh, Bitcoin is, as I like to say, the fainting goat of money, uh, as well as the honey badger. Uh, it, it, you know, it gets tipped over by the clap of China and then stands straight back up again. So it's, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not too concerned. It's never too late. Adam McBride, welcome back to the show. Oh, what do you think? China news, the biggest news in the world, a complete disaster or nothing to worry about? It's uh, good to be back, by the way. 
And what it is, I see it's it's the battle of good and evil. I mean, it, it's just what it is. Uh, it's the battle of good and evil. And you see what author authoritarians do, which is grab as much power as they potentially can. Uh, I hope Josh is right. I don't know many Chinese people, so I, I pray he's right. Uh, that the Chinese people are industrious and can keep a little bit of control for themselves or try to maintain some sort of control for themselves. Because the reality is, is what this is, is a, it's more power grabbed by an authoritarian regime. And every one of us who is living in the free world needs to pay attention to this because when your government comes for you and your crypto, um, be very aware what this is. This is a grab for continued power and to never let the reins of power go. So you head on a swivel. You got to be really careful. Dan, Eve, Henny Penny, the sky is falling. Everything is over for Bitcoin. China has banned it once more. No, it's it's just it's whack a mole all over again. You know, prohibition never works. I, I think uh, I, I really like that saying. You know, Josh said about the the emperor. The land is is vast, and the emperor is far away, right? You know, I think there's always ways you can you can dodge it if you really want to mine Bitcoin. And and again, also what Josh said about the on and off ramps. That's the that's the kind of key area where they've got the most sniffers. But if you're just setting up a node and you can run a VPN, you can get around these sorts of things. Um, the uh, with regards to the hash rate sort of uh, dropping, it's back up to one, one forty eight, uh, roughly one forty eight exahashes, uh, uh, from uh, a low of something like sixty eight after it dropped um, after the kind of recent uh, China ban. Um, but you know, Bitcoin's brilliance is its resilience, uh, and uh, I think the the fact is that it keeps on again, as Josh said, made some, you, made, you made lots of good points. Um, it drops less and less each time, and maybe that's because. You know, the people that are in it, the longer they're, they're in for, the more they know that that it's just, you know, China bans just part of the cycle. Um, and the rest of the world, I think, especially El Salvador, um, is is a prime example of one man's trash is another man's treasure. Or like, you know, one, one, opportun one person's opportunity is another person's threat. And for El Salvador, implementing Bitcoin is a is a definitely uh, an opportunity. For China, they see it as a threat. They're rolling out the digital one. Maybe this is a bit of a sign that um, it's failing, right? Or or at least it's not getting the take the, the take up that they hoped for. Um, so uh, I just think that you you're going to keep playing whack a mole, and the people will decide. And they're voting with their miners, and they're voting with their transactions, and they're voting Bitcoin. I just think it's a real stunning reversal here. And we always used to talk about how China had a major advantage and how China was where all the mining happened. And you built the chips in China, you took them across the street, you started mining right away. And how the US and other countries might reject Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies because they were based in China, because they were reliant on China. So China did us a real favor getting rid of the mining. And now China again, is advertising Bitcoin to everyone by banning it. The media was all freaked out about this. Everybody in the media was saying, this is a disaster, Bitcoin and Ethereum. They said Bitcoin and Ethereum every five minutes today on CNBC. If you were playing the CNBC Bitcoin and crypto drinking game, you'd be dead now. So this is good for Bitcoin, good for China, good for Chinese people. It's gonna blow over. They can't ban it forever. I agree with Dan, I think it's just, short-term advertising for the digital yuan. It's gonna be great. The digital yuan is a fantastic project. I'm sure everyone will love it just like they love the social credit <laughs> system. So no one gets sarcasm. I mean, I, I to, think like, put you, you guys always, on the screen. You, you guys definitely lean towards like how Bitcoin's doing, like Bitcoin's its own entity and it is, right? How, and the life of Bitcoin has and how's it doing. And that's something to be aware of. And I, I appreciate all your views on that. Um, but I think from a personal perspective, like, yes, there will be those certain individuals in China who are smart enough and industrious enough and rich enough to, to mine Bitcoin or be involved in crypto. But it's just like if they banned it in the U.S., the vast, vast majority of people will never touch it because they don't want to get in trouble. Right. So for yeah, humanity, but... it's a it's a real negative. In my this opinion. is also yeah. an advantage for the U.S. and the other so-called free nations to adopt Bitcoin, to adopt Bitcoin mining, to adopt Ethereum, solar mining, all kinds of other enviral friendly mining. Uh, Josh, what do you think? The thing is that, you know, it's very easy for us to say that they will ban Bitcoin or ban crypto, but 
it's an almost impossible task. Like it's it's not it's not just Bitcoin, like cryptocurrency. You're talking like, are you gonna really stop a kid playing a game where his gun skin is an NFT and that can be traded somewhere else? And that's just one part of a billion different things in the DeFi space where where there's profit to be made. Uh, by staking something or, or adding liquidity to an automated market maker in the DeFi space, and you're actually churning a good APY. Like, this is a very, very hard beast to stop. Sure, uh, you know, it's one of those things where if I look at, if I look at the internet, I, I'm surprised that they've been able to really have like little clippy animated where they have this like cop come out and says you shouldn't be looking at this this is a negative score for you like these are the sorts of stories here and i'm pretty amazed that they've been able to control the internet so maybe they can control this space as well but i really highly doubt it because it's so vast and different and there's so many uh so many parts and moving parts to this whole ecosystem plus you've got the incentive of money and becoming wealthy. So they've got a, a, an extreme uphill battle. And yeah, I, while I agree with you, it's the full on industrial technocrats that will get around all this stuff. And it's the poor peasants that won't understand it, will stay in the dark ages and, and then suck up their CBDCs. But uh, really there is, um, there's the, the ecosystem's vast. And so I, I just can't imagine how they will ban math. Well, the cultural revolution may be incompatible with the internet, but that doesn't mean it's not coming soon to an internet near you. Josh is right. They have been able to control the internet. They've controlled the image of Winnie the Pooh now. They've controlled Tiananmen Square, and they're going to give a try at controlling Bitcoin. Moving on to the exit question, how long will China's nonsensical Bitcoin ban last? One year, three year? Five years or more, Joshua Shigala. Uh, officially, I think they could make it last for as long as they want, but unofficially, it's kind of like um, uh, you know, you can say something and something totally else is happening. Kind of like in high inflationary countries like Venezuela, they'll have the official inflation rate, which is total nonsense and garbage and doesn't make any sense uh, because the actual inflation rates on the streets. So it'd be kind of the same. Yes, it's bad, yet everyone in certain sections of the city will be like trading it and doing stuff. And hey, by the way, uh, there's a, you know, I remember when um, New York first brought in their bit license and it was banned there, right? Had the similar thing there. And all of a sudden we had people actually in, uh, you know, going and doing the, uh, the old street auctions where people would go and bid and ask um, live on the street. And that was, that was also fascinating. But um, yeah. I don't think it's going to last very long in reality, but it could last a very long time in their false narrative. Adam McBride. I, I love that. I'm hopeful Josh is right about that. Um, I don't, like I said, I don't know enough Chinese people to know what they're really like. Um, I pray that, that, that people are that industrious and hopefully they still are in China. Um, Cause I know, you know, I know a lot of Venezuelans here and you get beat down long enough and you stop kind of fighting for stuff. Um, so I'm hopeful that he's right and that the Chinese people really do take that on as like a, a responsibility because they know it's better for themselves. Um, so, hey, I, I'm all for that. Uh, do I, I think it's going to be banned our entire life. I can't imagine them ever coming back and allowing cryptos ever in that country. Uh, I, I think it's just they are looking at our crypto can be the national crypto and we know exactly what everybody's spending on everything and we control everything it's it's literally 1984 it's a perfect uh scenario for them dan eve well, did, did each time that they banned it did they ever officially unban it or did they just kind of because i can't remember like an event where they went we're not it's not banned anymore you know it's almost like this is just a reiteration of of like oh you know that hasn't worked we're going to have to warn them again. Like, yeah, uh, crypto crypt, 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 is banned again. Now, please listen to us this time. It's but double they, they, secret banned now. Double secret banned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's, it's you know, it's one of these things that it, it, it's going to, um, 
it's going to be very evident that it will become a, an arms race or a monetary arms race. And you'll get, you'll get, you're, you're either in the race or you're left behind, right? And I think that it will take a bit of time. You know, China did the digital one might be even successful, but it's not going to be successful compared to Bitcoin ultimately. And the rest of the world is gradually adopting Bitcoin. And so there will be a point where actually we might see China say we're unbanning it and actually come out of the the Bitcoin closet and say right okay we we're, we're now accepting Bitcoin but it may be too late um, um, uh, so I think I think it would be great um, if you're if you're listening um, President is is, is she sheeping she uh, it, you're right Xi I think you should unban Bitcoin what's that Xi Jinping yeah. Xi Jinping I think. Xi Jinping yeah. 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 So I think you should unban Bitcoin if you're not. Well, you're obviously not watching this because it's blocked, but because uh, you blocked it. So you should what? You should unblock it, watch it, and then unban Bitcoin. Thank you. And then welcome Bitcoin tourism, so we can check out that awesome wall. I hear that it's great. All right. I'm going to agree with Adam. I think the ban will last forever, but I'm going to agree with Josh. I think no one will pay it any attention. People will continue using Bitcoin. Bitcoin will thrive in China. Uh, just like they say, give unto Caesar that which was Caesar's. They'll pay for official things with the official currency. For everything else, there's Bitcoin. Moving on to issue two, Twitter tipping is back. Yes, it was years ago when we used to tip each other on change tip, and everyone would spam each other and spam celebrities with tipping messages. Now tipping's back using the Lightning Network and Strike to allow users to tip Twitter users directly. Adam McBride, what do you think about this amazing new Twitter innovation? Nobody's ever sent me a penny, man. I I, I, I tried to turn it on. Literally, I got I saw the thing pass through my news feed today. I'm like, oh, cool. Let's turn it on. Let's see how it works. N not for me. I, I don't know if it's because I'm outside of the US or something. Um, I actually did like log out, try a VPN in the US just to see, oh, maybe it's a US type of thing. I don't see it on my Twitter. I, I I don't know. Do you guys see it on your Twitters? Well, did you try the iOS app? That's the only one I have. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You should. It should be in there. You should be able to connect I, it to I Stripe. I don't see it. Uh, yeah, update no, update see it. to the latest version of the iOS. I did, bro. App. I did. You don't think I want I want tips on Bitcoin on uh, t on Twitter? I'm all about tips. Uh, yeah, it didn't work for me. It didn't but work. for the but other I... problem, you have to mention sarcastically that you haven't gotten any twips. Tips, and then people <laughs> will they'll tip you out of pity. And I can say I got about pity. I got about twenty bucks in pity. I can't, tips I can't imagine. Like, they're like, does Maybe, it work? But... And I was like, it works. It tell works. Me how much? So I know you've had it turned on for a while. Because were you like one of the beta testers or something? I remember you tweeting about it a while back, right? Maybe a month or so ago. But um, have you gotten anything yet? Has anybody sent you anything? No, we, we talk about it all the time. And of course, we did change it back in the day. Uh, one guy sent me 10 bucks. Uh, okay. A bunch of people sent me a dollar, like a total, a total of $21, which is cool. Hey. Uh, and I mean, That's I haven't done that much stuff lately where people would be like, let's tip that guy. But um, right. it's unfortunate. It's just that whole reservoir dogs. I wasn't so lucky to have a job that was deemed tip worthy. Like, you know, tip the guy at McDonald's, but he's bringing you food. He's working hard. Uh, society says no tip these people over here don't tip these people over here fucking bullshit <laughs> yeah i don't know man I, I, for me it's like tipping i mean i know it's a very like it's a very bitcoin crypto type of thing uh, a lot of early bitcoiners and stuff talk about tipping and have actually sent me stuff hey i want to send you a tip so it's all kind of for me as a, as a kind of crypto newbie it, it it's kind of a little bit strange maybe um but certainly nice and appreciated when somebody does send you one right i mean that's i've had well people for, for the nfts i was gonna say does it work because i mean i know on OpenSea you can transfer an nft like a curio card or whatever from one person to another do you put your address out there you're like hey uh, i'm adopting yeah. moon cats or whatever you got i mean i don't put it out there but obviously everybody knows where it is right because people track my wallets and stuff so yeah people know my public wallet address and will send me stuff and we talked earlier with josh about how he got some some of these scam nfts and you have to be really careful anybody who has it in the nft uh if you have an, a wallet on OpenSea, people will send you these kind of scam nfts if you don't know where that nft came from 
uh, just there's a three buttons on the top left hand corner of each NFT. Click that button and click hide because if you actually interact with that in any way, they're built on these contracts that will somehow drain your wallet. I can't even imagine that's possible, but I mean, I know a bunch of people it's happened to, so you have to be really careful in OpenSea. It was also an interesting effect recently when Snoop Dogg was discovered to be this major NFT influencer. And of course, everyone started sending him all of their favorite NFTs or advertisements for their NFTs. So it's a bit like Bitcoin tipping, but a little bit more like, I hope Snoop Dogg mentions my project tipping. Yeah. I mean, that happens to me all the time. People will send me whatever the, the monkey of the day NFT drop is hoping that I'll be like, oh my God, I got a monkey NFT, right? Um, but now with this scam that's gone over the last week, like I, I can't imagine anybody's do, gonna do it anymore because now it's just immediately to the trash or to the hide because everybody's terrified that their wallet's gonna get drained. We just can't have nice things. <laughs> Dan, Eve, Twitter tipping, any tips coming in for your wraps yet? No, I, I checked on my phone actually, and there's, there's, I don't think I've got iOS, and I'm on the the beta version of uh, iOS 15. Although I think it was it was out recently anyway with the new iPhone, um, but I don't have the tipping feature. Um, but I think it's a cool idea, right? And, you know, that, there was that video today of um, Jack Mauler's, you know, doing the the tip into someone in El Salvador, and you know, it's instant, it's it's free because because you know, sub Satoshi is pretty is pretty free. Um, and it's just incredible that it's going to really shake up the world of remittances. And, and that was kind of one of the reasons when you know, I worked in, in the Treasury Department when I found out about Bitcoin uh, uh, in, in like 2013. And, and it, it, uh, it really made me think when I learned about how many hops money has to, you know, in between sending, say, money from here to South Africa, how many hops it takes and how much how many people take a cut and, and everything. It's just insane. Um, and especially with people that use you know, Western Union and other services like that, um, they're getting rinsed at the moment, absolutely rinsed. Um, and Bitcoin is there to, to save that, especially with, with Lightning, where it makes it instantaneous. And over a social media platform, it's like, you know, it's combining Twitter and, and Bitcoin is peanut butter and jelly, right? It's like the it's going to it's going to completely change the way people send money to each other and the banks can't keep up with it. And that's why it's such a threat to every bank and central bank, because um, it is the hardest money that you can have. And now that you can send it virtually for free with Lightning Network, tipping it over a social platform, that means that, you know, I can imagine Twitter basically takes the, the place of a lot of banks, you know, and and, and, and it's going to take a huge cut of Western Union, um, uh, I think, in, in future. Um, so, yeah, I think it's I think it's pretty, pretty incredible. I think they're also mentioning about, you know, verifying NFTs. Um, uh, or uh, some sort of verification service over Twitter to, I don't know, uh, imagine that Twitter providence over Twitter um, or something. But um, I think it's it's the interesting thing about the NFTs being dropped is that there's, there's the same thing happening with tokens, right? It's not happening as much with Ethereum uh, on the Ethereum chain because the fees are so high. But, you know, I've got a few, you know, Binance, uh, Bi BSC wallets and Polygon and stuff and fiddling around. And they just get absolutely hammered with all these crap tokens that come out of nowhere, just so that you can see their project. It's kind of like that, you know, when uh, was it Shiba Coin um, to, to donated a load of their token to uh, to Vitalik, except he actually dumped it all. So it's good for advertising in a certain way. I mean, people might as well you know, take their chances. Um, but I think, as, as Adam said, that you know, it's, it becomes natural just to hide it, right? Once you see 10, 10,000 Ethereum giveaways, you're like, oh, screw this. Like, I'm not going to give my private keys out for the 11th time. I've learned my lesson. By the way, I, I need to clarify, Monkey Brain McBride here hadn't updated his iOS. So there you go, Thomas. That's the reason I don't have it, I'm assuming. I did update my Twitter and all that junk, but... My, my OS is, uh, is a little laggy, so that's probably why. So after the show, everybody can tip me. It's going to be fantastic. That was what I was saying. We got to update it, get it set later so you can get some tips after the show. And uh, to clarify what Dan was saying about the Twitter NFT uh, verification, it sounds to me like it's a digital flex verification. Everyone's putting these NFTs as their Twitter image profile. And if you have a very expensive NFT as your profile and someone else is using it, you don't want them to be able to use it. So Twitter 
at least I've heard, is proposing a system where they check like your OpenSea account or your Ethereum address or something and verify that you have the punk or the ape or bro that's gonna be you i'm telling you in the nft space that's a big deal like that my ape is like ape verified and they're gonna have a little like ape verified check or whatever they're gonna check on the nft like a little you know nft check uh would be massive like for and for people in the nft space uh people would love that it, it, it feels it, it feels deal. like twitter's pandering but it also feels kind of futuristic like they're getting into what the kids are into Maybe the kids are right, you know, uh, this uh, whole collectible JPEG thing, which everyone always harps on. They're always like, oh, that JPEG, I'll copy and paste it, blah, 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 blah. But uh, yes, Dan mentioned that it is a, uh, everyone loves Twitter tips. They go together like peanut butter and jelly, peanut butter and jelly littered with the salty tears of people who worked at Change Tip. Yes, Change Tip had this idea first, Change Tip executed this idea in some fashion and uh, as a person who knew people that worked at change tip insider information from years ago change tip definitely had meetings at twitter change tip definitely had the opportunity to tell jack perhaps or someone near jack their idea about twitter tips everyone could see it it was very visual half of every message that i would get would be a you have been tipped a penny on change tip you have been tipped a penny uh, the same thing for my comment section on youtube you have been tipped a penny, another penny, 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 uh, which was great. And as DJ Booth mentioned, the dollar he sent is worth $139 now. But Change Tip had the idea first, but they ran it on an internal database. They weren't really using the blockchain. They weren't really using transactions. Now Strike might be doing the same thing, but they're kind of connected directly to Twitter. So there's not as much spam. I don't seem to be getting the small messages for a dollar. If you send me $10, it does seem to send a message on Twitter. Something like that's probably a good idea to have a, a, a threshold, right? If they send you a hundred bucks, I want a message about it, right? But if it's a penny, no thanks. Uh, Josh, Chigala, but you know, the, the, one who, the one who's really done it right, sorry to cut you off, the one who's really done it right is YouTube. Uh, YouTube and their tip feature, um, you know, on live streams. It's really, I mean, in my opinion, like the most effective use of tips, like, and that actually really, really works for people who are doing live shows and stuff. You can make a living off that. Um, they're the ones who've kind of done it right. Obviously it's not decentralized at all. It's not blockchain at all, but, um, just from a use standpoint, um, I find that YouTube's is the best. The super chat's very good. I like the idea of the subscription, but I haven't tasted it yet because I don't know that they let people with smaller accounts have subscriptions. Uh, so I'm sure it would be nice, but it's not quite there for us. Uh, but yeah, it is also about the blockchain and lightning and small payments. Uh, Josh Shigala, you were there for Change Tip. What do you think about Twitter finally getting tipping after all these years? Yeah, I mean, we, we mentioned that uh, a couple of shows ago uh, that back in the day, I used to get annoyed that people would send you like a Satoshi uh, and it, and go yeah well done he's a satoshi and you're like what what's with the satoshi man like uh, you know like, uh, or someone would put a lot of work into a video and they'd get tipped the satoshi and, and everyone goes wow what just happened uh you know because no one's seen this stuff before and, and man it was really good for getting the word out about bitcoin uh because people will go wow what is that and huh what what just happened but actually in terms of value to a person I kind of always equated it to um, tipping a busker uh, on the street by throwing uh, one cent into the bush next to him and saying, great work. And sort of expecting him to say, thanks. You know, <laughs> like, you know, like the like, amount of time it takes you to say, thank you. It's like, you just cost me money by even Yeah, it's like that, you. you're an asshole. You just- Exactly, the I'm, I'm with you, dude. Like there me. should be like minimum, like YouTube does it right, right? Yeah. You, the, the person can like set like a five dollar minimum, a ten dollar minimum, right. and anything below that, go fuck yourself. Like, don't yeah. don't waste my time with your half a fucking penny, dude. Yeah, yeah. But my I Satoshi's mean, gonna be worth millions <laughs> one day. You'll see. Yeah, and look, I mean, you know, the, the Lightning Network does allow you to do sub Satoshi's, so you know, maybe we see that back. But I have seen screen grabs. I haven't been able to get it on Twitter. Maybe it is because I haven't updated uh, my phone. But um, I. I'd be interested to see I, the uh, sorry the, the screen grabs that I've seen have shown like a dollar five dollars ten dollars like preset amounts so uh, that's that's kind of cool 
Uh, but really what I, what I love about this, and I'd like to see it in email clients somehow, uh, where people attach um, uh, some Bitcoin to actually get an email through to me. Uh, th this, you know, is a, is a, is a sort of throwback to, to Adam Back's hash cash. Um, but it would definitely stop a lot of crap emails coming through. You know, a salesperson will really have to want to contact me to spend five bucks um, or even a dollar. Um, so I, I would really love to see that. I don't know why I haven't, someone hasn't done it yet. Uh, they should. Please do it. Uh, I'll use your email client. If it automatically sends them back an email saying, hey, for Josh to read your email, uh, please send it. By the way, it automatically gets forwarded to his charity that he's chosen or whatever, you know. Uh, like there's all sorts of really cool things you can do. So uh, some some person out there should do that. Like Josh said, there's a great history of people making those email spam projects. Of course, Adam Back with Proof of Work, one of the first. Then Jesse Powell at Kraken had one for Gmail, where you had to send him Bitcoin. And then you out there could make one with the Lightning Network. You could join Jesse and Adam. Moving on to the exit question, Dan, Eve, Twitter tipping, the biggest thing in the world or completely forgettable? We don't even talk about it in a few weeks. No, I think I think it's gonna gonna catch on for for remittances. It's just like a, a cheap way of doing it. But the thing is, obviously, you've got to have the person who's, who's sending and receiving have got to want to be into Bitcoin. So I think it'll be more use for that, that and that, than it would be for just general tipping, because the thing is where the uh, other cryptocurrencies have tried it, where you just got you received it, you know, like Steam it or whatever, and then you're able to tip that. But with Bitcoin, you've got to buy it. You've got to buy the Bitcoin and then you've got to part with it. And everyone who's had Bitcoin knows that parting with Bitcoin is really, really hard. So it's either got to be for shilling your own project or something like that, spamming other people, um, or it's going to be used for actually, you know, paying mates, for example. Oh, you know, you went out for a few drinks and like, I'll, I'll just, you know, tip you over, over, uh, over, big, um, tip you Bitcoin over Twitter. Um, but yeah, I don't, I, I don't, I don't see the tipping function being that that huge. At least not not until Bitcoin's completely ubiquitous. I see it more for for being like people paying each other, maybe internationally, trying to circumvent the the banks, etc., and Western Union. I still get angry Twitter messages from that guy who tipped twenty bucks five years ago, and now it would be worth thousands. And he's like, "Why didn't you tell me not to tip you?" Yeah. Adam McBride, Twitter tipping the biggest thing in the world or completely forgettable? Honestly, the only thing I like is Dan's idea about remittances, right? That that actually makes sense. Uh, the idea that somebody's going to send me a dollar and wants me to interact with them for a dollar, um, I am completely out, uh, completely. Uh, if there's a way to set like minimums and stuff, okay, let, you know, it could work. But the reality is people aren't going to, I just don't think people are going to really do that. Um, but for remittances, th that could be revolutionary. That could be great. Uh, it's painful, but Adam's really hit on it here. People don't want to donate. They don't want to just give out money for nothing. They want something in return. It makes a big difference. And like you're saying, a dollar, all of your hard work, all of the interviews you've done, the people you've emailed, the little messages you send out, all the little configurations behind the scenes that you do that no one knows about. Here's a dollar. Thanks. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Oh, thank you. Oh, and I got to go like, oh, thank you. Reminds me of when we ran a um, like a spay and neuter program down here. And we spent like my wife spent like $50,000 one year spay and neutering like thousands of dogs. You just paid paid it. Right. And like we would have like a dinner to like talk about it and people would donate money to us. And literally I had a, there was a couple gave us twenty dollars and wanted to wanted to know where that twenty dollars was going to be spent. Dude, go fuck yourself. Like, seriously, I don't even, what are you talking about? Get out of my face, dude. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I ain't, ain't nobody got time for that, man. Ain't nobody got time the for that. The big spender with <laughs> $20 over there. Yes, indeed. Uh, Josh Shigala, Bitcoin tipping on Twitter, a huge deal or no deal? I, I think it's a huge deal. I think it's a bigger deal than, uh, than China fighting, like, in the reverse negative space. Uh, like, uh, I, I do really think that it won't be tipping, but it'll be payments. Hey, uh, can you pay me back? And I really want to see um, 
I, I think where it will really come into its own once there's like lightning stable coins or something like that, or, or you know, something, because that's where people start spending it. It's Bitcoin is very hard to get, like what Dan said, very hard to get out of people's fists from my dull, cold, dead hands. I mean, we've run a Bitcoin only gold business. We've done very well. We've sold oh, half a billion dollars worth of gold over the time since 2015, but, uh, and, and back and forth, like people have traded, but uh, I, we're a very, you know, we, we've, uh, we're a special case. If you accept Bitcoin for your, you know, your widget online, you hardly get any sales for it. Back in the day, you would have got some like, oh, let's support from the small community. Let's support that person. He started to sell his socks for Bitcoin and they've got the Bitcoin logo on it. Yeah, let, let, I'm going to buy some. And then, you know, a few years later, it'll be worth, uh, uh, you know, a, a Tesla or something. And you're like, damn it, why did I buy those socks that are now, one of them's gone. Uh, you know, so, but... Uh, what, so what I'm saying is that people really, uh, there's certain use cases that they'll buy uh, and spend and, uh, you know, but, but usually it's because they think they can get more. So they'll buy gold with us because uh, they hope that when Bitcoin drops, they'll buy the Bitcoin back, they'll sell their gold for Bitcoin. And, and, and so they'll have more so that th there's a use case because they want more. Uh, when you're purely tipping, you're actually getting less unless you go buy back. And that would be a really cool feature if, if Twitter could turn it on that as soon as you tip someone, it would buy it back for you. So you wouldn't lose the value and you could spread the word around and, uh, and give you know, some smiles. So I, I think that would be a really cool move if they could do that instant buyback. I call it the re-hodl, um, you know, trademark that. Well, the, the feature that people say they always want is they they say they always want to just turn it on and have it tip automatically like a penny at a time or a shaving at a time but everyone's afraid to turn that on because it would tip so much money everyone believes that people want to tip and they keep building these projects that allow them to tip but in sad reality i agree with the panel i don't think people want to tip humans they want do, to, don't work that way they want they to get work. something it's the strangest thing where you could give somebody 20 bucks and but you won't right but someone will sell you an nft like a jpeg and you'll give them a hundred bucks or a thousand bucks or even more for nothing someone will have a, a poster store a t-shirt shop you buy all these t-shirts for 20 bucks and you do your best you're like i'm gonna support my guy like posters t-shirts and then across the street somebody's selling an nft a rare pepe or something for four thousand dollars for one I yeah, could never that, buy that many posters or t-shirts. I would never donate $4,000 just to one person. That's an incredible, I mean, I had a, someone gave me a nice donation recently, but normally that wouldn't happen. Also, it's speculative if collectibles are worth what they're worth. But in general, that's one out of like eight years. Yeah. So people but, don't but donate great you, amounts. You see the difference there. One is you're hoping to sell, sell the Red Pepe for more sats than you paid for it. Whereas buying the poster or the T-shirt, you know that's a lost cost. Cost. That's a, that's, that's a exactly what cost. it is. It's the idea. Just hit on it, nail on the head, man. People want more. The reason they're buying that rare Pepe is they think they're going to be able to flip that rare, rare Pepe for twice twice the amount or ten times the amount yeah. in a week, right? They're not going to so look all at about their phone more. and go, "Ooh, I love that rare Pepe." So nobody much. gives a shit about rare Pepe's. They just want more. Yeah. More sets. <laughs> Now, I watched a poster documentary recently that had this new way that they're doing it uh, for these Mondo posters. And what they do is the artist does a limited run of like 100 or 50 or 200. They sign them, you know, pencil sign at the bottom, and they do new posters for movies that didn't have good posters. There's this whole thing about all the 90s posters are just heads floating on posters, and there's not a big drawn like a hand-drawn cartoon so they do those for the posters and then they try to sell them online so those do have some of the characteristics of the rare pepes of the nfts that we're talking about but yeah i agree with the panel people want to buy something to get a return uh the posters the t-shirts never going to have a return the prints very limited return but the nfts who knows let's see let's move on to issue three here we go. Issue three, Miami mayor 
thinks crypto will make it the most innovative city on the planet. He used to like Bitcoin, but now Francis Suarez, the mayor of Miami, is making his new coin. That's right, it's called Miami Coin, and it's going to solve all of your problems. It's not going to be anything like Aurora Coin, California Coin, America Coin, any of these coins in the past. Josh Shigala, Miami Coin is here to solve your problems. You can pay for government services in Miami Coin. The government of Miami can now print Miami Coin. The mayor of Miami, such an esteemed and high position, is now uh, the boss, the pope, if you will, of Miami Coin. Josh, are you investing in Miami Coin? Is this it? <laughs> uh, look, man, you know, this is what, uh, for me, this is what Satoshi, when he, when he uh, in, invented Bitcoin, uh, it was about competition. It was about competing against the Fed or competing in general. And, and uh, that's, you know, really what I am. I, I consider myself a competition maximalist. I think everyone should, uh, I should be able to create Josh coin. If some community is willing to take it, hey, well, that's cool. Uh, but it comes down to education and understanding how many can they create? Is it, is it a fraud? Is there one single trusted node like in the Fed? Um, is it, uh, you know, it, it's just, it can become a shitcoin very, very quickly uh, if it has, if he has total control. And I also want to find and out. His, his cousin's mining it on the server farm in the office next door. His cousin's a really good computer guy. You can trust him. Yeah, Dude, can, can we spin up some mine, some Miami coin nodes here? Can we, I, I'm definitely, I'm down for it. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Runs on cocaine. <laughs> So, I mean, it's a, it's a really, really interesting uh, thing. I really like the ideas. I would never use it uh, because I think, you know, any government issued stuff is just nonsense, go away. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's a nice try. <laughs> and Dude. although, you know, the, uh, the oil backed Venezuelan coin was also total nonsense. But yeah, Aurora coin, that was the classic from back in the day uh, for, what was it, Iceland or something? Uh, I can't, I can't quite remember it was so, so long ago, but um, that was the one that got airdropped and uh, it never really did anything because I think uh, they couldn't really solve the the problem of not knowing who it's getting airdropped to. And well, uh, everyone who did get dropped uh, Aurora coin sold it immediately. Yeah, The people of Iceland dumped Aurora coin as fast as they could get their hands on it. I forget yeah. what the Venezuelan one was called, like the Hugo or something like that, the Chavez. I don't recall. Uh, I don't really remember. Yeah, it was backed by oil, apparently, but it was just a scam, total scam. I mean, where have we heard this before? I mean, to think, is there any way I could just take the opposite bet on this? Because there's no way this works. No way. How do I know? Because I know the way governments are. I mean, you just hear the speech. I mean, he's a nice guy. I'm sure he's, he's got the best intentions. But it's the same talking points as the lottery. Oh, just think, this is going to be great. Look at it. I mean, he's literally giving the speech. It makes $2,000 every hour coming into the government. Oh, what are we going to do with all this newfound money? It's going to be great. Bro, give me a break. I mean, dude, how many times are we going to be sold this same bag of shit and think that this time it's going to smell nice? Dude, this is a bag of garbage, stinking garbage. And it's a nice guy doing it. I think he's got the right intentions. But, dude, there's no way this works. Zero chance. Yeah. I, and I, here, I, if he'd printed an NFT, he'd be all for it. If it was that's just a better picture, idea. That, pictures that is of Miami, idea. I know it is a better idea. <laughs> Uh, one, one of the things that I, I find interesting about this story is how the Fed reacts to this and if there's any sort of legal, uh, you know, why, why haven't the states issued their own currency uh, independently? His, historically, anyone who's ever issued their own currency, especially silver certificates, and I don't want to, you know, bring this on the mayor of Miami, has been assassinated. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a, that's a very interesting point. It's really yeah. interesting. Um, and maybe they've done it kind of in this like softy kind of way. Um, but he definitely called it a currency. Like I heard him speaking and he was calling it a currency. It's pretty interesting and a very mm -hmm. interesting point you just made there. Like, what is the Fed going to do? Yeah. Like, I almost think it has to be successful to, for them to do something. 
and the gods of that are it's obviously going to be successful he said you get that huge api like the four thousand percent a year or something (laughs) he he said he didn't know how it worked just like an ico it will be successful it's going to be probably about three months we'll have tanks rolling into miami we're going to depose we're going to take all i know is i want to start up i want to start mining this stuff like can you guys teach me how to do this can i can i run it on my mac here i had the opposite i thought you wanted to short it I thought you were in the bank. I want to. Like well, I don't know what I thing. want. I just want, I want to money. short Miami <laughs> coin. And they're like, you can short Miami coin. No one's ever shorted Miami coin. Yeah. They're like, build it for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, it would be, uh, it would be really fascinating to see. I, one of the things that, uh, that I do feel will probably happen is there'll be some sort of like federal intervention in this, uh, like surely. And not only not only has uh, assassinations happened, um, uh, well, some other ones that some rumors are that uh, Saddam Hussein was definitely talking about like gold settlement for oil in the Middle East rather than the US dollar. Um, uh, Gaddafi was also trying to set up a a gold settlement layer uh, instead of using the USD also off with that, you know. Um, So yeah, I I don't know. I mean, I, I haven't got full you know, uh, proof of that, but there is definitely rumors, uh, quite well researched rumors as well. Well, you know, my day isn't complete until the mayor of Miami is mentioned with Saddam Hussein and Muammar Gaddafi. Dan, Eve, Miami coin, we're looking at a real home run here. Somebody stick up for the mayor. I think it's going to go the same way as like Aurora coin did, you know, the, the, it, it sounds like a good idea, but I think yeah, the, the, the idea of the federal government stepping in, I think is a good point. Um, you know, at the end of the day, from a, from a Bitcoiners perspective, you're going from, uh, you know, government backed money to to local government endorsed money. And those are both bad things. Ultimately, Bitcoin is 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 the thing that you want. Um, but as if uh, as if it couldn't be more funnier, like the the, the fact that I, I keep on I, I keep on reading it's it's on a platform called City Coins, and all I can think of is that South Park character, like oh hello, welcome to Shitty Coins, come and get your shitty coin right here. <laughs> now obviously, uh, you know I, I don't want anyone to lose money, but uh, I'd probably recommend that you don't you know go in too hard on Miami Coin. Um, but um, yeah, I think I don't know. I think it's a good point that federal government might actually step in because it's going to tread on the toes of to, toes of the CBDC, and uh, and that's not going to go down well. Yeah, I, I actually, it's quite interesting to see um, how long it'll last. Uh, the, the, this, and and there are, you know, never underestimate the power of the newbie, and that have never heard of Aurora Coin, have never heard of any of these things, and gone, whoa, Miami Coin issued by the government do you know what i mean this is going to be massive like uh, and I, I can see it you know thousands of well, millions of people jumping in globally um so yeah it, i mean it could uh, pump that's for sure but there's definitely not financial advice i'm just saying it could pump for the wrong reasons because after bump on a stupid that's what i'm saying point. i think we mine we mine this stuff at the beginning we ride the pump and then we dump that shit. We get out. <laughs> Fucking retire in Miami with all that money. Woo! I think it's going to pump like a leak on a boat. You're going to need that flex seal <laughs> by the end of your uh, mining operation. You'll be very underwater. Let's move on to the exit question. Uh, Josh Shigala, are you ready? If uh, Let's pretend for a minute that the idea of city coins worked. Is there a city that you could think of that you would buy? Is there a city that you can think of that you would sell josh agala name two cities uh i'm uh Liberland. i would love to see a coin there and maybe uh the principality of hut river in australia uh those two places yeah adam mcbride a city you would buy a city you would sell <sighs> buy ah, i'm always a buyer of paris right everybody loves paris big buyer of paris uh seller Shit, Caracas, Venezuela. I mean, that's an easy one. Low hanging fruit. Dan, Eve, what would you buy? What would you sell? I'd buy Vegas because it's got so many pretty lights and shiny things. And I'd sell, uh, I don't know, I'd sell Southampton uh, because it's a <laughs> shell. 
<laughs> see shiny thing see this is a crypto raptor raptors are actually birds yeah uh dinosaurs and birds are attracted to shiny things uh, i'm buying I'm like amsterdam a devolved magpie <laughs> <laughs> I would buy Amsterdam. I like their new donut recovery strategy, trying to keep people in the donut, uh, not too big, not too small, like a donut. Uh, I'd probably sell San Francisco, even though I like it. Uh, there's just a big trend there. Everybody else is selling San Francisco, so I'll join in uh, right up until I can buy it at the bottom, right? Uh, they are putting in homeless shelters there, which is very good. Uh, they're going to give the people homes. And see I thought they already works. had them. You just go to the corner and there's just big tent cities. That's there. the That's thing. The big. tents are a disaster. They're putting in little houses for the people. They're going to try to transition them and improve their lives, uh, which is a better solution, even though it costs more. Uh, hey, moving what about on. Like maybe looking at mental illness, removing the drugs, the massive That's amounts part of, it. of pharmaceutical they... drugs that are just like, well, America's demand insane. Is a problem America's there. insane yeah, with the amount of pharmaceutical Big Pharma is such a big stranglehold. Every American I know is onto like, has about 15 weird drugs that they're like, pharmaceutical drugs that they're on. Oh, I've got ADHD and PST and this and that. And Josh, some, you should see the commercials. Thing and you're like, you what should the see heck? the commercials. I just are you watch, hot? Are you cold? Oh, are you I, tired? I just watch the news and it's like, are you tired? <laughs> Do your legs bounce up and down? You may have restless leg syndrome. The <laughs> side effects of this medication and the side effects are horrible. The side effects are Fires. restlessness. <laughs> yeah. Side effects Suicidal are thoughts, like giving up on life, like every single bad <laughs> possible side effects. It's like, why would you take this? Like, yeah. this is horrible. And again, why would they let them advertise it? They're prescription drugs. You have to get the doctor to sign off. It's like, have you heard about heroin? Heroin's a fantastic <laughs> drug. Get your doctor to prescribe heroin today. You'll feel great. Read a William S. Burroughs book. I've read several. But yeah, Josh, it's out of control over here. It's out of control. I mean, it's, just, it's just insane. It's insane. And it's coming soon to a Europe near you because everything happens in America first. So they'll get those ads to you soon, Josh. Moving on to issue four. Christie's is now accepting Ether in exchange for Ethereum's earliest NFTs, the New York Observer newspaper. Recently, Christie's announced that its October post-war to present auction that includes works by Andy Warhol, Wayne Tebald, and more will include the sale of 31 NFTs that are considered to be some of the oldest on the Ethereum blockchain curio cards christie's is selling curio cards made in may of 2017 by thomas hunt travis urig and rhett creighton let's go to adam mcbride first curio cards finally at auction the christie's auction historically had the beeple auction 69 million the crypto punks i don't know 30 million 100 million lots of millions right the curio cards estimated range 900 to 1.2 million on the low. Adam McBride, are you excited? What's going to happen at the Curio Cards auction? Bro, you know who I'm excited for? I'm excited for you, dude. Congratulations, man. Because really what this is, 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 is this is a congratulations for you. What you guys and your team did back in 2017 was visionary. And uh, at the time, it didn't work, right? You were too early but you have been redeemed. So congratulations, my friend. It's really feather in your cap for what you did in 2017. It's really amazing. Uh, Christie's for me, this is like a stepping stone for NFTs. NFTs, a year ago, nobody on earth knew what an NFT was. And it's slowly gained in the crypto community and now it's gaining wider acceptance uh, worldwide. Crypti Christie's is kind of like another box that's getting checked off for me in the NFT space. Curios, punks, these are all important steps. Um, but I tell everybody, look, we're still so early in this NFT journey. Uh, OpenSea says there are 200,000 uh, wallets on OpenSea. And if you're like me, you probably have 10 or more wallets. That means there's probably about 30 to 50,000 people who actually own an NFT in this world right now. Uh, we're all super, super early. Uh, and I couldn't be more excited. And uh, yeah, the Christie's auction is going to be great can't wait for the live show everybody join the uh, curio discord it's going to be amazing uh to do that live show and be a part of it and for nfts and crypto in general this is a big deal 
Well, it was pretty strange when we told Rhett what we wanted to build and we talked about it. Uh, there wasn't any uh, you know, standard for Rhett to go to. There wasn't any book where you're like, oh, I'll just build a, an NFT like 1.0 or 2.0. It was like, you build it somehow, you stitch it together, you put the image in there, you know, we'll make the cards, we'll have rarities and this kind of thing. And uh, all the ideas that we talked about on our early uh, YouTube shows and other things are now commonplace. Everyone knows about the rarity. Everyone knows if there's a one of one or if there's a serial number or how many cards there are. And it's uh, very strange to see those ideas that you know, we tried to push on people and people laughed and they're like, yeah, I could right click and save that. And all the things that everyone, you know, is a, a joke now. Uh, yeah, we had all of that early on. And that was like by VC people. They're like, I don't understand this. I have real baseball cards. This doesn't interest me. Uh, Josh Shigala, what do you think about Curio cards and the Christie's auction? Yeah, I, I second what Adam said. I really congratulations, and and it's well deserved. I mean, uh, you know, it didn't really the Curio cards were sort of even hidden through the first NFT hype cycles, and it was like I think it was Adam, right? You you sort of went through with your NFT mining, uh, sorry, esca excavating, trying to find. Uh, the rare stuff right in the beginning, looking through, dusting off with your brush in the, <laughs> uh, in the blockchain, uh, you know, and, uh, and, and, and then coming across this and sort of sharing it out into your community uh, and sort of re reinvigorating life into this thing. Uh, and, you know, it really is visionary. I, I, I got to admit, like so many people were back in the day when, when you were doing your stuff as well, Thomas, and, and people were talking about the concepts of art on the blockchain. I, I, you know, I still don't fully get it. Like I get it, like I get it I, definitely, but I think there's a massive a hype here uh, that's like out of control but where I do see the future is if you're an actual artist who's getting work out there, there's an absolute value to saying that you own the resellable rights to an original Thomas Hunt um, artwork. And, and this is, uh, or, or an original ex artist. Um, so I definitely uh, see that and, and um, you know, really, blown away that for me Christie's uh is kind of like you know Tesla accepting Bitcoin it's it's that for NFTs it's sort of a, a big step towards institutional uh money laundering no I'm just kidding uh it's, it's, it's a step towards institutional investment into this space and so um yeah interesting it is a really big deal I mean everything I know about the auction house I know from movies and popular culture a lot of the artists have talked about how in art school maybe they dreamed about posthumously being included in christie's and now they're getting to see it you know to have this kind of very serious auction book written where it's like nuts finip uh, berries finip you know it's just these the weirdest thing to see uh these little titles that we worked on and these cards that we worked on together uh, just become this huge thing yeah, uh, dan I, eve your th or go ahead josh no i i, I you know, seeing Christie's up there, it's a, it's a kind of a, it's a strange level upgrade from absolute obscurity. And, but I think, I think it's also one of these things like where, you know, when skateboarders all rejoice because now skateboarding is in the Olympics. It's kind of like this old school thing have, have realized that they need to keep up with the, with the new kids because the new kids are the next generation. There's no point staying stuffy and old and just selling what we've always sold, uh, but actually moving forward and, and selling what all the kids are hyped about at the moment. Well, and it's a unique time for it too, with the pandemic. Uh, they said that there's a couple of people at Christie's, probably the younger people who've kind of spearheaded this NFT thing. And one of the things they said is that at the time of the pandemic, it just made so much sense. Everyone was at home anyway. Everyone was collecting, you know, what was in their house. They, they're they very limited. And the fact that you could get this artwork, this NFT from artists around the world, and especially the first Beeple work, uh, people don't really talk about, but it was this, he did 365 artworks to make that artwork. It's a pretty special artwork to make 
the first big Christie's NFT sale on. Uh, they had to work for a whole year on that. And then to open it up to so many other artists, it's really an amazing thing. So, so what's selling on Christie's? Is it is it the whole set? Is it one set of it or is it single cards? It's a, uh, a whole set of, of curios, which is the one through 30. And then it's the misprint card. So that's 17B. So it's 31 cards. Basically, any any collector who wants a full set considers that misprint for, part of the full set. So it's 31 cards. Yeah. And it, the it's only being full sold, set that's it's being sold by a private collector. And that, as I've talked about many times, everyone's all like, the artists get a cut of the NFTs. And I'm always in there in the background like, no, they don't really. Not, and everyone's not, all not like, if it's the traded artists off get chain. a cut. Well, there you go. <laughs> they can hand it over on a Trezor. They can transfer it from OpenSea account to OpenSea account. They can send it to an address. I'm not sure how they're going to transfer the cards to the winner. Uh, but yeah, private collector, private auction, nothing for the artists. Uh, yeah. The interesting thing is really, as far as I know, this is really only the third uh, full set that's traded hands. Um, the first set I was involved with, I helped negotiate, and it was about 100 ETH for the first full set trade. Uh, that was the first full set of curios to ever trade um there's been one other which i can't give details on but it was basically an nft trade for an nft trade um where a full set traded for another nft which will go unnamed um so basically only as far as my understanding goes only two full sets have ever traded hands um so this will be the third and obviously the biggest and widest uh media hype around it so it's gonna be great to see and uh and the, the full excited. set itself is really interesting because cards 26 there's one 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 and then card number 29 there was a, a fair amount of 300 or something but so many of them are locked up in this time lock contract that the markets on those are so thin that to actually get a full set is an accomplishment but at the same time i want to say that like when we designed these and such uh, we talked about collector's mechanics. We talked about, I wanted to do packs. We talked about all these ideas about rarities and magic and baseball and all the things we had. Misprints, which again, we didn't do on purpose, but we would have loved to have. Like, yeah, if we sure you didn't do it If on we purpose, could have purposely sure. <laughs> misprinted it, like we would have done it uh, because it fits into the whole card mentality thing. So it is very neat to see people collecting a full set and buying a full set, but Again, this isn't like Voltron. The full set doesn't give you the power to get the lines together and form a magic suit, but maybe it does. I don't know. I've seen those people in the chat, in the Discord chat for Curio Cards. They have this weird system you can verify that you own cards or something. And some people, again, just like we were talking about earlier with the Twitter NFT profile picture verification flex, some people have flexed their Curio Cards and they can talk about being set owners because they're verified. So uh, somebody else at Christie's will be able to join the chat uh, with that little mark next to their name uh, pretty soon. Uh, so that's interesting stuff. Dan, Eve, your thoughts on Curio Cards at Christie's? Again, incredible, man. Like what an, what an achievement. It's, uh, it's, you know, it's something that's, you know, it was what, 2017, right? So it's like four years ago. And, uh, and as Adam said, it was way, it was, you know, way too advanced for the time. And I knew about sort of, you know, Pepe on, on, on counterparty, um, but I didn't know about curio cards until, you know, until the, after the first hype, the first wave hype. Um, and so I think it's incredible that it's, it's that point where, again, this fantasy land of crazy crypto stuff is being bridged into reality and not just into like a normal auction house, it's Christie's. And I know, I only know one auction house and that's Christie's. So that must be a big thing, right? Not just because it's the only thing I know, but you know, it's the it's the biggest one. It's the it's it's kind of you know it's the pinnacle of, of auction houses. So I think it's absolutely absolutely incredible, and and um, and the fact that um, you know the, the you've got the the misprints as well, like that's being included. I think that's really a really cool thing. Um, but yeah, I think it, it, it took time and it it paid off, and what a, an incredible achievement! I'm absolutely stoked for you. Yeah. It's like when Vitalik uh, Buterin met Vladimir Putin. <laughs> but yes, it's a, it, is, it is great. It's a great accomplishment, the old world, the new world. Like uh, Adam and I talked about on his show a long time ago, uh, you know, I had a failed startup. Like we worked hard on it. We tried to MVP and do all the things I read about. 
uh, but we had a failed startup and usually nobody gets anything for their failed startup. Like it just kind of goes away and usually you get a bunch of debt. You get a bunch of problems and uh, your partners don't like you. The people that raised money for you don't like you. The investors that used to be your friends and family in that legendary friends and family round, everyone wants to be Facebook, uh, but sometimes there's nothing. Uh, so to see a, a dead startup come back to life, there's been many other examples that Adam's covered, like the pixel map guy and all these other people who uh, had a cool project that, like we said, was just way ahead of his time. And now people have gone back and they're like, yeah, million dollar homepage, but with Ethereum and you can buy the panels. They love that. Uh, crazy, uh, I don't know, fighting little characters, crypto warriors or something like that. They love that. They love the Ethereum map guy. He's got a big map, buy part of the map. I don't know what you do with it. It's a map. They love it now. I don't know. There's a mania. Uh, you got to be careful with a mania. Everyone loves a mania because you get caught up in it. And you're like, I bought this board ape for 0.3 and I sold it for 300 Ethereum. And, you know, this is sweet. Uh, but yeah, let's all remember to have a little bit less mania, cash out 10% here or there, cash out a little things. Because yes, I think NFTs are here to stay, but are they worth 100 Ethereum next year? Are they worth 10 Ethereum? Are they worth one Ethereum? They're definitely worth something but how much? And I think we're gonna find how much at the Christie's auction. Forced prediction, Adam McBride, putting him on the spot here. How much will the auction sell for? Estimates, again, the range 900,000 to uh, 1.2 million. Obviously, people, uh, 69 million, I think, CryptoPunks, 30, 40 million. What's it going to be, Adam McBride? We're, we're entering into a recession. There's possible inflation. Uh, China real estate just crashed the stock market. Bitcoin and Ethereum are down because China banned them. Obviously, this is the perfect time to bring curio cards to auction. We've waited for this moment. We let CryptoPunks have all that massive success. And uh, now, do you think we're even going to reach the, the auction minimum? I, th I think it's going to be, um, I don't know. My gut says like 780, 780 ETH, uh, like whatever that is. I just punched it into Google, 2.3 million. I just, Ooh, 2.3 million. That, yeah. Just big, big money. I don't know. I just, I, that's the gut. That's my gut feeling. Doesn't necessarily make sense from a logical perspective because the reality was, you know, when, I, when I sold that first set for a hundred ETH, like I had people nickel and diamond me. We had, we had another set that was almost closed on, but the the buyer was nickel and diamond me at like 130 and he wanted it for 125 and he wasn't going to pay more than one, you know? And so it's like, wow, you look at that and you say, well, geez, wow. But my, my gut just says it's going to be a big one. It's gonna now big there's one. a lot of factors here. When we think Christie's, we think old fashioned traditional auction house. I mentioned the T-balls, the, the war halls. I love them, but those are works from the 60s and the 70s. These are people bidding with paddles. I don't even know if they can come to the room. You know, if they can bring the pearls, it might be a closed room because of the COVID. There's also a new element that could be good, could be bad. You have to have your Ethereum in a, a proven controlled account or something. I don't know, Coinbase. And you probably have to send them a printout showing you have the money. But there's going to be some kind of an online bidding with Ethereum. So bonus question adam will it be the person in the room with the paddle and the millions of dollars or is it going to be that strange person out there on the internet with the ethereum maybe got it from crypto punks got it from one of these other projects and it's just rolling it over wants the christy I, I think it's a paddle dude i think it's some dude with like oh i need to get into this space let me get in i think that's that's what happens um because the reality is the people in who i deal with the whales and stuff know that they could have picked one up much cheaper than this. So um, my feeling is it's not going to be an ETH buy. It's going to be somebody buying in the room, some family who wants to enter the space. And this is a, what they deem to be a safe way to enter the space. You know, when they realize that, you know, Gary V's in the space and the dude who, who's the president of the 76ers, Daryl Morey owns a full set, you know, serious collectors own the full set. This is like a cheap entry point. And when you think about it, when you compare it to the price of punks or anything like that, this is like a, a mid-level punk. Um, it's, it's a pretty safe play. I just pictured all these rich uh, art hordes that I've been to, people that have all the art on the wall. And, and the guy walks through the room like the butler with the white gloves. And he's got like a treasurer or a ledger. And he's like, 
with the curio cards and he puts them in the vault or on the shelf. They build like a little shrine. They're like, they have to work out a new way to display their digital art. You watch, they'll pay $3 million for it. They'll display it on a $300 digital picture frame. <laughs> Josh Shigala, uh, how much do you think it'll go for? Do you think it'll be a person in the room or one of these strange new Ethereum bidders at home? I, yeah, it'll definitely be, um, I think it'll, I think it'll be, in the seven digits somewhere yeah um uh <clears throat> it's it's interesting with the paddle stuff i was at the crypto castle here in uh in in germany uh it's it's amazing place uh crypto castle check it out if you're traveling uh they do events uh, fairly often there and there was an auction between a painting physical painting massive huge painting uh, I'm six foot eight or something, and this painting was bigger than me. Like it, it was huge. It was a huge Bitcoin. And it's quite good, right? Anyway, um, and then there was this beautiful NFT that was made by this gentleman, and it, it really looked gorgeous. But it had a projector and a projector on the wall, and people. So they started the bidding first of all with this painting, and it was like, oh, you know, one thousand and someone, one thousand five hundred, and it got all the way up to like uh 4000 uh, and that's when I 4000 I went like you know it's a bit too too much to drink <laughs> and, and and then it stopped and I was like eh? now how am I going to get this home <laughs> All right, uh, uh, going once and I was like huh come on come on it was someone else going twice three times boom anyway I got this thing and uh we're we're leasing it to the the castle it's going to stay there and that's uh, it's beautiful but What's interesting here is that the NFT, uh, it, it hardly went for, I think it was a thousand or something like that, right? People were more excited about the physical thing in that moment, in the physical space. And people were a lot more sort of tight fisted with their money in the physical space. But when you go into an auction that's online and it's with crypto, it seems so fluid. You're like, oh, one Ethereum. Boom, two Ethereum, three Ethereum, ah, five. It's like, it's a total different headspace when you're in cyberspace clicking a mouse and these weird digits are just flowing back and forth. And you're like, well, I don't, I don't know, it's five. You don't really equate that that's like 10,000 bucks. If you had to say 10,000, you'd be like, man, you're crazy. You just bought a JPEG for 10,000 um, bucks. Uh, but yeah, so I found that a very, very interesting dynamic not just between the physical and the digital, but between uh, the physical space bidding in, in dollars or in euros um, and f f bidding, you know, and, and the mentality of bidding on an NFT that needed a projector, the projector has to be on, you know, whereas the painting, you buy it, you hang it, it's there all the time. So that, that was kind of interesting uh, for me. And, um, but yeah, the, 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 the ways to display this artwork, I think is fascinating. I think e-ink would be really cool to get that done because it takes hardly any electricity. If you can have some sort of um, e-ink that works during the night and then you light it with normal lights from the front, uh, that would be really cool uh, with these NFTs. But um, yeah, I, I, I don't know, maybe uh, Adam's right. Maybe the paddlers will, uh, will wanna, you know, they're old family officers and they'll want to get into the space. Uh, but I think there's some fat fingered whales online that uh, might just want to troll the paddlers and just make- Now that is try. true, like totally true, man. Yeah. <laughs> totally, yeah. totally. So, it's interesting what, what Josh says about the auction mindset here. Cause I was in an auction recently and it's interesting the online auction versus the in-person auction. Yeah. Uh, the online auction, I'm making all these kind of assumptions about the other person I'm bidding with. At first, I was like, I'm kind of interested in this. But then I noticed like how fast they were bidding. And I was like, ooh, they're really interested in this. They like want. And so now I'm kind of like, I'll just bid it. See what happens. Like Josh saying, like, just mess around. And then I'm like, I wonder if they'll do this. And they weren't doing it. Right. And the time's yeah. just ticking away and you're like, oh, crap, I won this thing. <laughs> but that's how the auction is. You get all bamboozled in your brain. So I do think yeah. the people in the room, the people online, the guy yelling it and chanting it, doing the banging and everything. It's just a great uh, microcosm of human emotion and of capitalism, of all these things coming together of, of the sale. 
right? The mm -hmm. one person wants to sell, another person wants to buy. There's some like back and forth, but the auction solves everything. So yeah, auctions are a weird thing. Um, I, some say the reason for Australia's property boom was because it was one of the few countries in the world that really does auctions all the time. Like it's very normal to do property auctions. And, um, and uh, yeah, the, the mindset and getting trapped in a, in a bidding war because you're just at that moment really passionate and you, you want it even more because someone else wants it. And, uh, you know, it's very different to just, hey, so how much do you want for that? Oh, that much. Hmm, well, let me think about it. Uh, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll buy it. It's very different. Also the fun, like you said, of bidding for spite. And there's that interesting idea where with the giant artwork, you have to strap it to your car, you can't even get it home. Uh, yeah. The person at home bidding with spite for the NFTs, at least they're very portable. At least yeah. they're not gonna fill up their house if they screw up and they win them. Whereas with eBay, you screw up and you win like a hundred gross of toilet paper. And it's like, oh my God, this house is ruined. Yeah. Let's go to Dan, I, I, Eve. I, I, I talked with um, an artist the other day, um, kind of a famous digital artist um and he said it's so interesting because he was doing stuff on bitcoin in 2015 putting out 2015 2016 doing nfts on bitcoin and he's like so he would do the digital art which people could then download and he'd also offer the nft he called it a token back then as like a proof of ownership he's like nobody wanted it back then 2016 2017 he basically stopped doing it because almost nobody wanted them back then right mm -hmm. and how how times have changed now where that is at least in the circles i go in um that's more even more important to them than the physical but what josh just touched on this idea of like the physical space in a physical space bidding on a physical thing and the way that it uh, raises emotions and competitiveness and market conditions is um it's fascinating and i'm i can't I, it's going to be so exciting to see how this goes off well, and I think a lot of the, the crypto punks, they get so turned on by this one of one idea. When I see the original of something, I have that same idea, the one of one of Van Gogh or whatever, obviously not ownable, but maybe for a smaller or a newer artist, maybe ownable. Mm. Well, one of the things I, I, I do find interesting about this entire move by Christie's is that they're kind of cannibalizing their business model a lot because uh, a lot of what Christie's does is verify and, uh, and, and, and uh, yeah, check for authenticity of a work uh, and, and, and case it properly and have the Christie stamp that this is an original. And whereas with NFTs, all of that is out the door. It's just cryptographically provable, provable that that is an original uh, curio card. And so uh, what they're going back to is basically just the, uh, the percentage that they make on the sale on that auction at that moment, um, which is, yeah, it's just, it's interesting. It gets to this interesting point of like what we as humans ask or, or believe in other humans kind of verifying something for us mm. brings about this like enhanced belief in something whatever that something may be, it could be Bitcoin, right? In the same way, like I wasn't fully into Bitcoin till some of my friends were also into Bitcoin. In the same way, NFTs, like we're in the Curio card um, Discord, you know, in, in March, and there's a hundred of us, right? We kind of believe it, but it takes another step when, you know, Gary V enters the Discord and he believes in it too, right? And then there's another step when Daryl from the 76ers joins in. And then there's a huge step when Christie's jumps in, right? And so you just get this kind of layering of belief and one human believing in something and then another human also believes in it. And then you just like layer on these kind of, um, these things on top of it. And that's kind of what the NFT space is going through right now. It's, it's fascinating to watch. What's next after Christie's, Thomas? That is part of the problem that the story, that is kind of the pinnacle of the story for a lot of art is getting into a major auction house. Uh, I would agree with what Adam said. Christie's is kind of projecting this coolness onto curio cards. Uh, they're establishing them. And that in the same way though, like Josh said, much like Western Union is quickly being replaced by Bitcoin, Lightning Network, and maybe even Twitter remittances, Christie's could, 
and I don't want to be mean to Christie's here. I, I appreciate what they're doing for us, uh, but they could be replaced by OpenSea. That OpenSea check mark, the blue check mark, could be as good as getting into Christie's, having the book written about you, having the promotion, all the things that they're offering, which are, are excellent things. But I agree with Josh, taking away that provenance. Provenance is a huge part of what Christie's does. This is officially a Wayne Thebal. This is an Andy Warhol. Like we tracked it. We got the previous buyers. We got the art book. You know, this is not a Van Gogh. This is a fake. That kind of thing is handled perfectly by NFTs. We used yeah. to talk about it all the time on our old YouTube shows that we did for Curio Cards, but it seems like the provenance that we established in my apartment in San Francisco is now equal to the legendary Christie's auction house in London. Uh, so that might be a problem for them in the future, but I think they've got a lot of time still. And they're, they're, um, they're shifting, right? The art world is not the banking world. They didn't sue OpenSea. They didn't say stop making NFTs. Christie's and Sotheby's, the other major auction houses, at least so far, they're shifting. Now, whether that's they're doing letting the, the, doing the Trojan the horse thing. in or... They're yeah. doing the smart thing because as you guys pointed out, like there's no need for them anymore, right? In reality, it's right there on the blockchain. We know what this is, right? But they've smartly understood what their position can still be, yeah. which uh, is as that of a tastemaker or an yeah. anointer. And they can still do that um, because... Absolutely. We are we are old enough to still remember, you know, five years ago when Christie's was necessary to tell us that that's a Van Gogh, right? Um, so they they they're moving. I mean, it's really quite smart. And I know people f from there. I've talked to them about this, and we were in discussions and stuff like that. And they're they're trying to move. There's a, a section of those organizations which understand, like, you know they're being chased rapidly out of business and they yeah i wouldn't say out of business like the physical art isn't going anywhere they will still True. need to check provenance of physical art and and it's right. only going to grow so I, I don't believe that but i do think that they are doing the right thing and i agree with you here where the, if they set up a competitor that's actually really good and has a beautiful interface and is uh, is uh, more headed towards the the high end of the market uh, for nfts they could really take that space now um, right. because it's not available so open is very sort of cheap and nasty oh, it's clunky looking. They and got a amazon if that if if that yeah. it's more like ebay garbage um yeah. you're right dude I, I never even really considered that because i think of like when i think high end i think like super rare or something like that but for me it doesn't feel like they have the, the skills technical knowledge to pull that off like i just don't feel like they have a i'm team. not sure how technical it is though a lot of it is what you're saying earlier adam that it's this white glove service that right. i am the art collector i want to be walked to the art gallery i want to buy a real van gogh i don't want to you're buy right, a dude. fake van gogh return it three months yeah. later whatever that's not what i'm doing here that guy next to me that's his job and if he's got to go work the computer machine to make it happen and put it in my address, computer or machine. whatever, put it in a vault, <laughs> that's not something the art collector wants. No, to No, Josh about, is right, so. dude. That's a good. I mean, that's that's like solid idea. I, I you know, I, it's funny with all the talk of Christie's and talking with Christie's and all that, that was never discussed. So I don't even know if that's even on their radar um, to do something like that. But them as like a super exclusive high end auction online auction place for NFTs. Yeah. would be super smart but i don't think they're I they should they're do it now before uh, they have to sell their name like polaroid and atari Bingo. and we just buy them at Bingo. some auction and uh, make them do whatever we want polaroid yeah, makes because, anything now yeah it is um it, it is really uh, the time to do it and that what what made me think of it is well what happens to the collector that does buy the set can they go back to christie's in a year and say now i want to sell it and the Christie's will go, oh, well, yeah, of course, and then set up the auction again. Well, it would be much better for them to have an actual platform where that, that, um, that volume is moving quicker for, um, because that's how they're making money. No, it's not on the verification. So they want that, uh, the velocity of the artwork to move more. So to build a proper auction house uh, online like OpenSea, but better, uh, would be uh, of great interest, I could imagine. Even even this online format that we're going to see, and I don't know if it's going to be a train wreck or not, but I'm picturing the guy with the auction gavel. Nobody has that. OpenSea has a billion dollars and not an idea in their head. You want you, you want to get it? 
hire me every weekend. We'll bang out some open sea sales and it'll be fun. People would watch it. And Christie's, I mean, this thing we're going to do is going to be fun. I don't know about the rest of their auctions being fun, but if they did it every week with these NFTs and hired a guy, did an online auction, get the Noah guy to write about the NFTs. And like you're saying, Josh, the flipping them is such a good idea because if you are heavy into a crypto punk and you made a mistake and you want to flip it, Christie still gets their 2% or whatever. They get their cut every time you flip, even if you're flipping in distress. Uh, yeah. So it would be great to be there. The alternative is uh, to just let these people be screwed if they want to flip and to have well, them not have an you, option unless, to, uh, unless NFTs are still cool next year. I don't know. Christie's need to pay you as a, a, an advisor to get that happening, i got to say. Well, it's never too late, but we're running out of time. Let's go to Dan, Eve. Dan, uh, we asked you about the auction, right? Yes, but I think, uh, I, well, and not the not the breakaway question. So I think, I think actually, I think it's going to go into the into the like I need. I think they're two million because I think that people are going to have the Beeple thing on their mind. And they're going to be thinking, wow, the last one was sixty odd million. Um, you know, this could be this could be you know even bigger. And I think they'll be bidding against each other. And I reckon it will be traditional paddle as well. I think you know there may be sharks online by someone who comes in who just like you know, who may, you know, got in on the Ethereum ICO and just has a thousand to spare or something and just goes crazy. But I think it's going to be a paddle, a paddle person. Like they're going to be sat there with the paddle, all excited. And then they they probably haven't even heard of an NFT before, like a, apart from hearing it, you know, that it, it was being sold at Christie's. And it'll be something like that. Like someone who just, just can't miss out. It'll be like real world FOMO bridge from Christie's. Very interesting predictions about the paddles and the price. Uh, I think I hope it'll go high. I hope it goes more than three million. I hope we see some serious action. Adam, I think we're running out of time. You've got another podcast to run to. Uh, we're going to see you soon for the Christie's auction. We're going to try to broadcast it here. YouTube hasn't been broadcasting for it. So we're probably going to record it live here and upload it later. But you can also join us on the Curio Discord. We're going to have an audio chat there. Everyone can join. We might hang out in Zoom too. Uh, Adam, anything you want to say in closing uh, as we head towards the end of the show? Well, I think, uh, again, it's a, a big feather in your cap, man. So just congratulations from everybody uh, in the space. Uh, you've been in the space forever. And I think this is just a huge win for you personally and for the work you did in, in 2016 and 17. So congrats, brother. You're here. Oh, thanks so much. And check out the Adam McBride show on uh, podcast, Apple podcast, Twitter, all the places. Uh, thanks so much, Adam. We're going to move on to issue six. I think it may be issue five. It's a bonus issue. I just thought it'd be fun to talk about. Morgan Stanley's Dennis Lynch says that Bitcoin's ability to recover is like the character Kenny from South Park that dies every episode. Uh, it's great to see the Morgan Stanley guy saying this. We all know it's true. We also know that it's an interesting and rather outdated episode or reference, as we can see here from this amazing chart from Reddit. Uh, over the first five seasons or so of South Park, Kenny was killed in every episode. Then he started to survive much more. The deaths are much infrequent. Uh, they're now on season 22 or greater. Uh, so that's probably about a 17 year old reference there by the banker. Uh, but Josh Shigala, what do you think? Bitcoin is like Kenny. He just keeps coming back. It's the Kenny of money. I still like the fainting goat. I don't know. I just like the fainting goat because if, uh, check out fainting goats uh, on YouTube. They're, they're amazing. They're an actual breed of goats that somehow just stiffen up and then fall down at, at like little, if they get shocked uh, just from like a scare, like a clap or something like that. It's, it's just amazing. And then they scare each other. So they start to all tip over because i like, oh, what is that and they get back up and uh really i think bitcoin is very similar to that strange australian animals from josh shigala dan eve is bitcoin like kenny he just keeps coming back from the dead yeah definitely i think that the, it's a great comparison and and actually um you know, You've only just, I've only just realized since you pointed it out that it happened obviously a lot more in the earlier episodes. And maybe that's like, you know, that's 
that's a, a bit of a synergy with Bitcoin and the fact that you, you used to hear like once a week someone would be saying Bitcoin's dead, you know, and you had the Bitcoin obituaries. But now it's just few, it's, there's a lot few and far between. Uh, but there's as Bitcoin has evolved, there's a lot less people that have the guts and the, uh, to say, oh, I think Bitcoin's going to die because it becomes more and more of a stupid idea. Right. So at the beginning, like again, analogous with uh, South Park, it was like this fun idea. And then maybe people kind of got bored of it and 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 yeah, eventually like they thought, well, we won't kill Kenny off every episode. And people are now realizing, well, I'm, I'm just going to look like a complete idiot. Like instead of saying they're going instead of you know going right bitcoin's dead they're going to go think it twice themselves and think i'm going to be like that twat in the obituary the bitcoin obituaries and i'll be just <laughs> one of those people along the timeline won't i i'll be one of those people along the chart that said bitcoin's going to die now so yeah i think it's uh, i think it's a great little comparison and bitcoin will live forever i think dan's got it here he's really on to something especially the analogy about killing off kenny early on and not doing it so much later. No one wants to say that Bitcoin's dead anymore, that it's going to zero. It's lost a lot of the fun, uh, but it is fun to say crypto and Bitcoin every five minutes on CNBC. So don't play that drinking game. Uh, we're running out of time. Josh Shigala, do you have a prediction or a story of the week? Go ahead. Uh, yeah, actually, if you could turn screen share on for just a second, because um, I have here the, uh, the Bitcoin obituaries chart uh, which is which is super fascinating. Um, yeah, we have uh, uh, you know in the early days, um, Bitcoin obituaries, uh, four hundred. It's died four hundred thirty times, and um, and every time you, you've got to be a fool. I mean, 20, 2021, I love that it's died still thirty seven times this year, according. To, so it's kind of interesting that uh, that it kind of jumped up this year. I don't know. <laughs> it's a, uh, funny, funny stuff. Anyway. And how low uh, it was in 2020. That's interesting. It just dropped. I mean, yeah. 14, was it? Yeah. 14, yeah. Uh, 41 to the... But what was interesting, in 2010, only once. I, I don't believe that, actually, because they were saying it's dead all the time, uh, even even back then, and, and 11 and 12, like one what. Um, but anyway, uh, that was just that. Uh, story of the week. Yes. Um, I, my brother lives on the Canary Islands, and uh, my older brother, and he, uh, this volcano exploded in Poma, um, and it's, uh, this, this tongue is heading towards his house, and he's had to, like, cruise up there, and, um, uh, and, and fly back, and, and try to rescue his guitars, and, uh, and the funny thing was, I'll have to, um, play the, the, <laughs> this little, this is what, when the, the navigation uh, was uh, heading his way, hang on, oh, shit, one second, uh, here it is. This is on Google Maps. Your route may be disrupted. Your route may be affected by Calma Viege volcano eruption. <laughs> your route may be affected by Calma Viege volcano eruption. <laughs> when do you hear that, folks? When do you hear that? I, I, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, poor guy, like, uh, you know, uh, my, my, my thoughts with you all, all, all laughing aside, it's, it's pretty crazy that some are saying that half the island might slip into the sea, the, the volcano will split the island in half. And uh, luckily, he's staying on the other side that the uh, geologists think won't slide into the ocean. Uh, but yeah, the finca that he lives in um, is on the side that is right in the way of the lava. And in the last uh, day, it's actually chucked a left and headed towards that bastardy neighbor. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, it, it's heading toward, to, you know, around. So uh, he's really hopeful that uh, it won't destroy the place, but uh, let's see. That's the story of the week uh, for me. <laughs> Real hot lava, lava flows. That's a, that's a hot story there, Josh. I oh, know. <laughs> All right, that's very bad too, though, for a natural disaster and such. Uh, yeah, Dan because Eve, it's not even insured. You can't insure against it because it's a natural disaster. Yeah, they're not going to offer insurance either. It's awful. Uh, Dan, Eve, prediction or story of the week? Go ahead. I'm going to go for a, a prediction. And I think uh, I think 2.1 million and the two the two and the one is a reference to 21 million of, of Bitcoin. So 2.1 million, I reckon, Curio cards are going to go for. 
So that's my little prediction. Dan Eve putting it on the line. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to predict it. I'm sticking with my uh, my high prediction, hoping that, like we've said, there'll be a bidding war. Uh, these people in the crowd, maybe they haven't bought any NFTs yet. They're like, our art gallery is empty. We need NFTs. We've got 30 and one, 31 great NFTs you can buy this week at Christie's. Uh, so everybody check that out if you got a couple of million dollars. Like Josh was saying, if you're an early Ethereum person, you want to bid on that. You want to get yourself some Curio cards easy way to get a complete set uh, so everybody check that out it's going to be early in the morning on october 1st uh, we're going to be hanging out in the curio cards discord we're going to try to record it we're going to try to live stream it we tried to live stream this and it didn't work again so i don't know what the problem is uh, we had an original path we would go zoom to restream it restream it broadcast to everything it stopped broadcasting to YouTube. YouTube's kind of our main thing. That's our bread and butter. So I said, okay, no problem. I configured Zoom to directly broadcast to YouTube. Now that's not working either. Two weeks in a row, it doesn't work. So I guess I have to go test how to do this again after 277 shows of doing the same thing every week, uh, if possible, until they killed Google Hangouts. So those are the technical issues. I'm gonna save this show now and upload it. Uh, maybe you guys tell me what time you want me to play those. I've been playing it at 9 a.m. on uh, Saturday or Sunday whenever it gets uploaded. So those are our technical issues. That's what's happening. We do the same thing here every week. So I don't know what other people have changed uh, to make this not work, but it doesn't work. So, but thanks so much to everybody for joining us. And make sure to give us a thumbs up, even though you're watching on the replay, I can still see you at home. I can see, still see whether or not you push the thumbs up button. So it's important that you do. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Until next time, bye-bye. Bye-bye.